Hey guys, it's time for a stupendous Drew Pendus compilation. Let's watch all of Drew's 2018 adventures. Here we go. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pen ultimate. Hold on, cause today's episode is gonna be a wild ride. It was horseback riding day and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait to get up on those super cool horses. Well, howdy, cool school. I'm Cowboy Calvin, but you can call me Cowboy Calvin the Third. Are y'all ready to claim your steeds and ride like the wind? Am I ever? I call that one. That one's got my name on it. Hmm. Well, I guess that leaves that one. Nay. Sorry, kid. Looks like y'all got stuck with the puny pony. Yeah, that's what they call me around here. Uh, nah. It'll be great. We're gonna lead the pack. Just you wait. Giddy up, horsey. Whoa! Wait up, kids! Well, this is very relaxing. Uh-oh. I think he could use a pair of these. You quickly sketched some super awesome rocket boots. Whoa. Uh-oh. Whoops. Maybe two pairs. Giddy up, speedy steed. <laughs> Looks like the storm's brewing. It's not safe out here, folks. You gotta find cover till the weather clears. Quick, in there. Phew, at least we're safe in here. <laughs> you kids cozy in there? Wait a second, I know that voice. Rain of gloom, I should have known. <laughs> Who gave you guys permission to go horseback riding on such a rainy day? Sayonara. Or shall I say, Sayonara. <laughs> Calm your horses. I'm going to get us all out of here. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into the stupendous Drupendous. Drew quickly sketched a super awesome rock climbing wall, which he used to climb his way out of the dark cave. Be right back. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we can't go anywhere? Uh, right. Uh-oh, that's a long ways down. Where do you think you're going? Ah! Gotcha. No way! How did you get over here? Thought you might need a hand. Or a hook. I was the only one small enough to squeeze past that tree. No way! Looks like being small isn't so bad after all, huh? It's got its perks. You too! Quit horsing around! I've got an idea. Drew sketched a long rope and tied it around the tree. Giddy up, pony! Yee-haw! Oh! Game's over, Reyna. No more ruining horseback riding day. It's not fair! All I ever wanted was to ride a horse, but Mama said it would distract me from my villain training. If I can't ride, nobody can. Oh, you'll ride all right. Boys, hit it. <laughs> I'll get you for this, Drew Pendus, if it's the last thing I do! Thanks, boys. Really saved the day over here. Don't thank me. Thank Little Pony. He's the real hero here. This little guy? Well, I'll say. Heroes come in all shapes and sizes, you know. It's all about what you put your mind to. Yeah, and right now, this hero pony feels like giving you all a ride back to the range. You guys ready to ride like the wind? Hit it, Little Pony. Uh, more like a leisurely stroll. Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again with the help of a little pony who was just the right size. Horseback riding day was back in action and Rain of Gloom wasn't going to bother anyone with her rainstorms anytime soon. Way to go, Drew. Moral story, boys and girls, never underestimate little ponies. They may turn out to be super awesome ponies. Oh, and beware of jealous bad guys who make it rain on a beautiful day. That can be a real problem when you're out for a horseback ride. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pen ultimate. In today's episode, Drew's got to solve the case of the missing lunch. Oh no, missing lunch. That's bad. Mmm, my mom's famous quesadillas. Can I taste? Uh, sure, I guess. Hey. Thanks, Elma. Spinach, loaded with niacin and iron and zinc. Um, anyone see my peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Robbie! Okay, okay, it was me. I'm sorry. It's just, I'm really hungry. Well, that's what your lunch is for.
my lunch is gone! As in you ate it? No, someone else ate it for the third day in a row. I know I bring good lunch and all, but that is just not very nice. You haven't eaten lunch in three days? Not a single crumb. Uh-oh, this is not okay. We've got to find the lunch thief. But how? I don't even know where to start. I have an idea. There's one person, or should I say flea, who always knows what's going on. Fly me to the moon. I want to dance among the stars. How can I help you? Uh, it's me, Flea Father, Pupendus, and my friends Nikki, Ella, and Robbie. Thank you for coming to visit, but perhaps you do not realize that this is the day of my daughter's wedding. Again? You sure have a lot of weddings. Fleas have a lot of kids. Yeah, you got a problem with that? No, sir. Who are you guys anyway? I'm Ted. Well, real name's Steven, but everyone calls me Ted. And I'm Fred. Everyone calls me Fred. Ted and Fred? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Well, we're here because we have a bit of a problem on our hands, and we could really use your help, Flea Father. When, when you've got, got a problem, problem that's big, and, and you need, need a solution, solution that's, that's small, I am the Flea Father. father. That's, that's all. all. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm always happy to help you, my friend Drew, but what's in it for the Flea Father? Hmm. How about a new tux for your daughter's wedding? Very nice. I like this lining. Tell me what's on your mind. Well, you see, Flea Father, Robbie here hasn't eaten lunch in three days. He's had no lunch for three days? Not good. Tell me about it. Every day I bring a full lunchbox to school, but all my food disappears before I can eat it. I see. What did you bring for lunch on Monday? Um, fried chicken. And Tuesday? Macaroni and cheese. And Wednesday? Fish sticks. Do these clues help you? No. But that's a lovely menu. Fellas, you got it? Fish sticks. Got it. As for you, kid, my hunch is hot dog is your answer. Hot dog? That wasn't one of my lunches. No, no, no. Hot dog the dog. Have you seen that little guy lately? Not so little. Hot dog's the culprit? <laughs> that's my bet. But there's only one way to know for sure. All right, boys. We're going in. We'll be right behind you. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into the stupendous Drewpendous! Then Drew sketched the shrink ray. He zapped himself and his buddies, and they all jumped into Hot Dog's mouth! Whoa. Okay guys, we're reaching the end of the esophagus. That's what brings food from Hot Dog's throat to his belly. Speaking of, we're here! Uh, I think I'm gonna be sick. Hmm, just as I suspected. Fish stick. Yup. That's it. Keep poking around and I guarantee you'll find your chicken and your mac and cheese too. What's going on? Oh no, Hot Dog's stomach is acting up. Uh oh, he's headed straight to the small intestine. And trust me, it's all downhill from there. With no time to spare, Drew flew after Robbie. Whoa. Then he quickly sketched a trampoline at the bottom of Hot Dog's belly. <laughs> Mmm, my casserole. Oh, how I missed you. Well, my good fellas, I rest my case. Hot dog's your man, or your dog. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a wedding to attend to. But how do we get out of here? No problem. Not my first dog detective case. Now, with a little tickle right here. <coughs> Remember, kiddos, keep your friends close and your lunches closer. Adios, muchachos. <coughs> Not again! Drew, quick! Make us big again! I'm on it! Phew, that was close. This should keep him out of trouble for a little while. Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. With the help of the Flea Father and his fleas, of course. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride and take care of my little girl or else. Oh. Moral of the story, boys and girls, be sure to keep an eye on your pup before your lunch goes missing. And hire the Flea Father the next time you need a little help for a big problem. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. In today's episode, we've got a great big switcheroo in store for you. It was time for science class at Cool School, and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait to do a fun science experiment. Hello, kids. My name is Miss Hap, your new science substitute. I hope you're ready to switch things up this science class. <laughs> 
boys and girls, feast your eyes on the one and only switcheroo machine! Wow! Whoa. Sounds kind of fancy. But what does it do? Simple. It allows any two people that step inside to switch places and become the other person. That's the switcheroo. Whoa. I want to see if this thing actually works. Well, why don't you step right up, young lady? Give her a whirl. Hey, I want to try too. Splendid. Kids, give a round of applause to our first two switcheroo volunteers. But meanwhile, Grace Scale was up to no good watching them through the window. There it is. The rumors were true. Excellent. Remember, this machine could be the key to taking down Cool School once and for all. All I have to do is find a way to get in the machine with Drew Pendus. Then, like, we switch places, I get that darned pen, and, like, bam, I rule Cool School. Precisely. Go make me proud. We'll celebrate later with a jar of colorful M&Ms. You know, mean and meaner. <laughs> Drew and Nikki hopped into the switcheroo machine. And it worked. They switched bodies. Hmm. Still hadn't gotten the hair to work right. Whoa. I'm you. And you're me. Then Nikki, as Drew, sketched a giant test tube. I have always wanted to do that. You can make a ton of thunder in that tube using basic science. First, add concentrated sulfuric acid. Whoa, where did that come from? I really turned into Nikki. Well, all right then. Time to switch back, scientists. I was just getting started. I am going to build one of these of my own one day. Drew and Nikki hopped into the switcheroo machine and I switched back to normal. Hmm, that actually worked. Cool. Well, that's all for today. See you soon for more science fun. This is really cool. Ready for round two, Drewfus? Huh? Gray scale? What's going on? Oh no, the switcheroo machine turned on and... Drew and Grace switched bodies. Hey, Drewfus, how do I look with this pen? Give it back, Grace! You mean Drew. Then Grace Skill used the pen ultimate to turn into Super Drew! I've got the power now, and there's like nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Miss Hat, Miss Hat, you have to help me! A villain trapped me in the switcheroo machine and ran off in my body! Oh no! Oh no, oh no, 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 no! That's not good at all! You see, the switch only lasts an hour before you get stuck in each other's bodies forever! Forever? And you're only telling me this now? That's why they call me Mishap. Grace Kale, what are you doing here? I bet she's trying to steal the switcheroo machine. Grab her now. No. Hi. You have the wrong. Yeah. Grace, we got you, Grace. Game's over. Now what have you done with Drew? I am Drew. Oh my gosh. Grace ate Drew? I don't think that's what happened here, guys. Robbie, off now. <sighs> Thanks, Nikki. It's really me, guys. Grace zapped us both in the switcheroo machine, and now she's running loose in cool school looking like me. Wow, that is like extra villainy. We don't have much time before she takes down cool school. Come on, guys. We have a villain superhero to catch. With no time to spare, Drew and his buddies ran out of the science lab to find Grace. I mean, Drew. I mean, Grace. Well, Grace, who looks like Drew? Uh, you know what I mean. They got to the crafting room, and Crafty Carol was tied up in pipe cleaners. Grace had drawn a huge mess. Drew Pandis, ruining all my crafts. Oh, I'm going to get you for this. Drew and the gang kept running. They got to the library, and... Oh, no. Not Miss Booksy's library, too. Oh, no. Grace had drawn the beast from Beauty and the Beast. She drew real-life fairy tale characters, too. What's next? She's having way too much fun with my pen. Then in the gym, they found Grace. She was drawing a giant portal to Cruel School. Cruel School? You're going down. Oh, no, it's not. After her! Ella came running, but Grace drew a banana peel. Then Robbie and Nikki came running, too. Look out for the rhinos! This pen is, like, so my jam. 
Give it back, race, or, or... Or what, Rufus? No weapons to save you now. Except yours. Drew, turn on what? Grace's color no. vacuum. It ah! sucks Grace right inside. Who gotcha. Drew, put Grace in the switcheroo machine. <laughs> and... It worked. They're back to their normal bodies. A me again. Woohoo! Oh, whatever. It was like totally lame being you anyway. Woohoo! We did it! Never been so happy to be me. Drew Pendus, you got a lot of explaining to do. Not again! Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. Cool School was safe from superhero imposters, and Drew wasn't trapped in a villain's body forever. Moral of the story, boys and girls, be careful of switching room machines. They can be scary stuff. Unless, of course, you're switching your little brother for an ice cream cone. That's cool. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pen ultimate. In today's episode, Drew and his friends find themselves in a sticky situation. It was the day of the annual slime off, when all the schools competed to see who could craft the best slime ever. It was down to Cool School versus Cool School in the final round. The judges were Crafty Carol, Dean Mean, and the famous slime scientist, Professor Jigglybottom, who was a little sleepy. <laughs> Okay, kids, remember, making slime is about having fun. So why not you- Fun? This has nothing to do with fun. Don't waste my time with bad slime. Okay, guys, with just the right amount of science, that slime trophy will be ours in no time. Drew, I need borax. Robbie, glue, please. Ella, food coloring, water, and two bowls. Let's do this, team. Reina, I said borax, not earwax. Relax, Eraser Boy. I couldn't hear you, all right? Well, it's no wonder with all this earwax stuck in there. Here you go, Ray. I think you just add a little bit. Gotta learn from the pros, Timmy Timmy. Go big or go home. Uh, uh. You guys gonna help me with this or what? Uh, oh, this uh, time is uh, like too uh, hard. <laughs> Way too much borax, villains. Someone hasn't been doing their science homework. 10 minutes to finish, boys and girls. We're doomed. We've got this gross rock, and Cool School's got the gooeyest, most perfect slime ever. Not for long. <laughs> Grace, get the lights. Rena, how fast can you brew me a rainstorm? Fast as lightning. Well then, on the count of three. One, two. Huh? Who shut the lights? I can't see my slime. While everyone was totally distracted, Ray Blank was up to no good. Can't win the slime off without any slime. Good luck, Drufus. Oh no! Our slime, it's... Gone! Thanks to that slimy Ray Blank. Why, I oughta... Five minute countdown! Work! Slime! Win! Guys, we cannot let Ray win. Maybe if I drew our new batch. Uh-uh. We'll be disqualified faster than you can say slime time. All right. Nikki, how fast can you whip up a new batch? Guess it'll have to be in five minutes. That's the spirit. You heard Dean mean. Make slime and win. With no time to spare, the gang sprang into action, working against the clock to whip up a new batch of the best slime ever. Meanwhile, Drew sketched the super awesome villain detector. No villains are stealing our slime on my watch. Way to go, Ray. You did it. We're going to win. Um, like, not so fast, guys. Ah, uh, figured Nikki had a solution. Well, it's about time she learns who's boss. Stop right there, Ray. So Drew quickly made the ultimate slime blaster. But Ray dodged all the slime as it came right at him. Drew, do something. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into... The stupendous Drupendous! Then Drew sketched a huge crane. It grabbed onto the barrel of the slime and lifted it way up into the air. But Ray wasn't going anywhere. Get down from there, Ray! Never! This slime is mine! 60 second countdown, boys and girls! It's almost slime time! Drew and Ray swung the barrel back and forth like a tug of war. They crashed into lights and all the lights went out. Oh no, it's falling! Oh my! Cool School made a sculpture of Professor Jigglybottom! It looks so lifelike! Wow! I have to admit, that is some impressive slime! Uh, for slimy little kids anyway! And the winner is... Cool School! Ah! It's our pleasure to award you the first place prize! A superific slime trampoline! 
Yay! Yay! Do you think Professor Jiggly Bottom is okay in there? He looks happy. <laughs> and what do the cool school kids have to show for yourselves? Shameful! Detention! All of you! It's like I always say, don't do the slime if you can't do the time! We'll be back, Drufus! We'll be back! Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. Slime off victory belonged to Cool School, and they got the coolest slime trampoline ever. More well, the story, boys and girls, keep a lookout for thieves the next time you make an award-winning batch of slime. And I repeat, don't do the slime if you can't do the time. Oh, yeah, and that too. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his Mighty Pen Ultimate. Get ready for a splash of good time because today Drew's got to save the lake from a villain takeover. Or should we say, a lakeover? It was spring break and everyone's getting vacation ready, including Finn. Thanks for taking me to see my family hero, Drew. Can't miss spring break at the lake. Mom and Dad will be there and Cousin Nilo and Uncle Arlen and, and... Finn, pack now, talk later, remember? Right, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. Doesn't your family feed you on spring break? Oh, well, Mom's cooking can get a little fishy. Never forget those seaweed shortbreads. All right, well, hurry up over there. Submarine leaves in 10 minutes. Submarine? Spring Breaker Rigger 3000! Whoa! Let's go! All aboard! Uh, Hero Drew, how are we getting out of here? <laughs> Good point. Drew quickly sketched a pair of wings on the submarine. Then they flew out the window and all the way out to Big Lake. Um, I could have sworn there was a lake over here. Me too. He drew up a map to make sure they were in the right spot. Yep, we're definitely in the lake zone. Oh, no, 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 no. If the lake's gone, that means my family's gone. And my family's gone, that means spring break vacation is gone. And a spring break is Finn, gone. Finn, calm those fishtails. There's another lake just over there. Maybe your family went to that lake instead. With no time to spare, Drew sketched a supersonic skateboard. Drew and Finn rode out at lightning speed straight across the dried up lake until they reached... Lake number two. Looks like this is where the party's at. Excuse me, pardon me. I'm wondering if you've seen my family. Yay, big. Ginger runs in the jeans. Friendly folk. Oh, yeah. I think I saw them over. Uh oh. Wait. Hold up. Over where? Oh, sorry, sir. My bad. Cousin Nilo? Ben? Boy, I'm glad to see you. Where have you guys been? Didn't you hear? All the waters disappeared from Spring Break Lake. So everyone had to swim over here. Rumor has it this one's going next. Disappeared? Water doesn't just disappear. But then the waves started getting really big. It's happening again! Nilo! Finn, over here! The waves are coming from that direction. We need to get closer to see what's going on. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into... The stupendous Drupendous! Then Drew sketched a giant clownfish robot. He and Finn got inside and they went underwater. Whoa! I've always wanted to swim through a lake in a giant me. And off they went, swimming through the lake in the giant clownfish with the waves swirling all around them until suddenly they were approached by a gang of angry sharks. Uh, maybe swimming around in the big edible fish that sharks like to eat wasn't the best idea. Hero Drew, why aren't we moving? If we stay very still, maybe they'll swim away. Do you really think that'll work? Ah! Uh, maybe not. Drew tried escaping the sharks, but they stayed on his tail. He steered the clownfish right and left, higher and higher, as the sharks attacked from all directions until finally he lost them. Phew, that was close. They almost got us. But then you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's time to celebrate just yet. Uh-oh, kids. Looks like Rain of Gloom is up to no good again. I should have known. I bet she's behind the disappearing water. Sure looks like it. <laughs> With the fate of the lake on the line, Drew steered the clownfish right up to Rain of Gloom. Ah, giant fish! At least someone's afraid of this guy. Raina tried swimming away from the clownfish, but it followed her right behind her. Raina tried zapping it with her umbrella, but... <laughs> can't fight water when you're underwater. Ooh, ooh, give her a piggyback ride, or uh, a fishy back ride. That'll scare her real good. Drew quickly steered the clownfish beneath Raina and snatched her up on its back. Let me off, let me off! If you say so. Drew steered the clownfish higher and higher until he reached the water's surface. Drewfus, you have got to be kidding me. Drew whipped out his pen and sketched a giant glob of ooey gooey. Bubblegum? Seriously? Let me off this thing, Drew! 
now? Not until you stop stealing all the water from the lake. Yeah, you're totally ruining spring break. Never! Suit yourself. Once more, Drew pulled out his pen ultimate and sketched a giant air pump. Sayonara, Rana Gloom. Stop that! This isn't funny! Uh-oh. I'll get you for this! Victory! Spring break is back on! Well, almost. Then Drew sketched a water cannon that refilled all the water that Rana stole from the lake. Whew, my family's safe and sound. Speaking of, I should probably get back to them. Go get them, sidekick. I could use a spring break of my own. Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. Spring Break Lake was back in service, and Drew got to kick back with a nice lemonade. Moral of the story, boys and girls, don't let water-stealing villains ruin your spring break. Oh, and if you happen to be riding a giant clownfish robot, remember, stay away from sharks. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pen ultimate. Get ready to jump into today's episode, because we're heading to the annual Olympics. It was the morning of the Cool Olympics, and all the kids were practicing for the biggest gymnastics competition of the year. Woohoo! Great work, Ella. You're gonna kill it at the Cool Olympics. Nailed it! Who are you? Oh, how rude of me. I'm Jen. Jen Nast. I just transferred to Cool School. Just in time for the Cool Olympics. Lucky you. I'll say. I love gymnastics. So, uh, how do I get on the team? I was on the gymnastics team at my old school and... I don't know. It might be too late because we've been training for weeks. Maybe next year. Oh no, that poor cat. Way up in that tree. <laughs> I got this. Jen vaulted and somersaulted up into the air. She grabbed the cat and flipped back down. Wow! This little guy belonged to you? Uh, group meeting. We gotta put her on the team. I'm not sure, guys. I'm a little suspicious. It's like she's superhuman. Or super awesome. I've been doing gymnastics since I was little, and I have never seen that before. But... All in favor? So, we were thinking, if you're still interested in being on the Cool Olympics team, I think we can make an exception. Yay, I'm in! Cool Olympics! Welcome to the annual Cool School versus Cruel School Cool Olympics. <laughs> We've got to win, guys, and take home the gold. This craft delicious golden chocolate nugget, that is. And painted it myself. Round one starts now. First up for Cruel School is Grace Kale on the balance beam. Okay, I've like got this. Ta da! Wow, what a great routine by Grace Kale. Nice score. Now, first up for Cool School, looks like it's a brand new gymnast. Ladies and gents, Jen Nast. Whoa! Jen fell off. Oh, no. Well, that didn't go too well. I don't understand. She was so good in warm-ups. You're doing great, kid. They're clueless. I got this in the bag. They'll lose before they know what hit them. The next competitor for Cruel School is Raina Antoinette Bloom. Raina did her routine, but she dropped her umbrella and made everything too slippery. Gosh darn it, this is the last time I'm bringing my umbrella to the Cool Olympics. That's a six out of 10 for Raina Gloom. Up next for Cool School, looks like it's the new gymnast, Jan Nast. Jan ran towards the vaulting horse. Oh no, she crashed right into it. She's ruining Cool School's chances of winning. Boy, she's even better than I thought. I saw her do those jumps and warm-ups, and she was amazing. Something's up. Maybe she gets nervous in competitions? She doesn't look too nervous. She looks happy. Things are looking pretty bad for Cool School. Next up for Cool School is the amazing Ray on the rings. Ray jumped up and swung on the rings, but then his eraser accidentally erased them. Man, I gotta remember to keep my eraser in my pocket. We barely have a chance. Yeah, good luck, Poofus. You'll need a perfect score to win. Huh? Whose side are you on? Looks like she's on their side. So that explains why you were so horrible. You were doing it on purpose. Team Cruel School all the way. <laughs> Good work, Jen. Best undercover villain I've ever trained. Oh no, kids. It looks like rising star Jen Nass was really playing for Cruel School. Well, that's pretty bad. We don't have anyone who can get a perfect score. We are so done for. Not if there's a new star athlete in town. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into... The stupendous Drupendous! With no time to spare, Drew sketched himself a pair of super springy trampoline boots. Booyah! Jen Nest got nothing on us now. 
right now, competing in the final floor round for Cool School is Drew Pendis. Let's see if he's got something up his sleeve. Talk about high-flying action. A spectacular routine by Drew Pendis. That is a tough act to beat. We'll see about that. Then Jen flipped all over the place. And she fell. Ah, it's my own fault. I put slippery oil on the bars when I thought Ella was going next. Ugh. And the votes are in. The winner of this year's Cool Olympics competition is... Cool School! No! Cheaters are never beaters, gymnast. Oh, we'll see about that. Better watch your back. I've got flips that'll flip your world. Hey, you dropped your library card. Jen nasty. That makes sense. Hey guys, over here. You've gotta try this. Well, kids, Drew saved the day once again. Cool Olympics victory was all theirs. And Jen Nasty would be nasty no more. More of the story, boys and girls. Don't let super villains on your gymnastics team. They tend to mess stuff up. And the next time you're in an Olympic competition, don't forget your trampoline boots. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendis and his Mighty Pen Ultimate. Hope you're ready for a roaring good time, because Drew's about to ride some real life dinosaurs. It was museum day at Cool School, and Drew and his buddies couldn't wait to see the brand new dinosaur exhibit. These boys and girls are the remains of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can tell it's a T-Rex because of its small arms and two clawed fingers, and a 13-foot head. Ooh! Uh, I can't tell anything from this pile of bones. Well, let me tell you, this pile of bones is worth a pretty penny. Yeah, collectors will pay anything to get their hands on real dinosaur bones. Personally prefer my bone crafts, but that's just me. Uh-oh, kids. Looks like someone else wanted in on the dino dollars. Ray Blank! If I could dig up some dinosaur bones, then I'd be rich! Anywho, let's keep moving, kids. So many dinos, so little time. Hey, True, you thinking what I'm thinking? You mean sketch a time machine to go back to the dino era to see these big boys in person? Uh, I was just thinking of taking a selfie with the T-Rex. But that sounds way better. Way better to take selfies in person. Let's go before anyone notices we're gone. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into the stupendous Drewpendous. Drew used his penultimate to sketch the time machine. Drew and Ella time travel adventures. Here we go. One, two, three. And off they went, way, 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 back in time, like 60 million years, until finally they reached the dino era. Um, what just happened? You threw us all in the time machine and hit the super speed lever. That's what happened. What are you doing here? You're not the only one who gets to see real dinosaurs in action. Why are you going to be so villainy all the time, huh? How else am I going to get to the dino era? Catch you losers later, or not. <laughs> We should go after him. I thought we came back here to see the dinos, not chase bad guys. He'll still be here when we get back. Yeah, I guess you're right. With Ray on the loose, Drew and Ella took a slight detour to make some new dinosaur friends. How y'all doing? What's your name? Ah, uh, Petoni. Petoni Pterodactyl. Well, Pterodactyl if you're more scientific. But anyway, you guys are a little small to be hanging around these parts, don't you think? One wrong stop and pfft, you're done. Good point. Not too safe for little people around here. Here you go, just hop on. Uh, I don't know. You are a bajillion pound dinosaur after all. Nah, common misconception. Pterodactyls aren't dinosaurs. We're just flying reptiles. So you're safe with me. Okay, giant flying reptile sounds pretty safe. I'm in. Um, all right. I actually give tours part time. Gotta put lots of food on the table to feed mouths this big, you know what I mean? I'll say. Google says one of your teeth is 12 inches long. Huh? What's a Google? Ella, they didn't have cell phones 65 million years ago. You're gonna blow our cover. Wow, no cell phones? That is prehistoric. Right, well, over here to the left, you'll find my friends, the Triceratops. Those are some pointy heads. Yep, Triceratops, three horn face. Don't wanna get those guys angry, trust me. <laughs> Whoa, girl. Uh-oh, looks like Sarah's hair top doesn't want visitors today. Okay, we're going, we're going. Hold on tight. Petoni was up in the air, flying right over the entire dino village. Woohoo! This is amazing. I can see every kind of dino from up here. Wait till you see him upside down. That's fun. Whoa! They flipped so fast that Drew's pen fell right out of his pocket. Oh no, my pen! He tried to grab it, but it was too late. 
Meanwhile, Ray Blank was up to his own shenanigans at Dino Diner. Dumb dinos eating the meat and leaving the bones? If only they knew how valuable these would be in 65 million years! <laughs> Ow! Why I oughta... That kinda looks like Drufus's pen! Suddenly, Joe and Ella came flying down Patoni's back! Throw my friend his pen! But Ray had all the plans. Before Drew could reach the ground, Ray snatched up the pen and sketched himself a super awesome ATV! Or should I say, a Ray TV? Always wanted one of these. He's headed in the direction of the time machine. He's gonna go back to the future with your pen. And we'll be stuck here forever. Not if we get there first. Tony, after him. I'm on it. Hold on. Meanwhile, Ray sketched himself an x-ray blaster so he could spot all the buried dino bones along the way. <laughs> I'm gonna be so rich, I'll buy all of Cruel School. What's going on? Ray's getting away. Hey, even pterodactyls need a break here and there. I'm getting tired. We are so doomed. Okay, listen, Patoni, we're at the tail end right here, and wait a sec, tail end, that's it. Patoni, think you have enough strength for one quick tail toss? I guess. That sounds really not safe, but really fun. Count me in. Drew and Ella quickly slid down Patoni's back and onto his tail. They held on tight to the tip. Hope to see you kids again sometime. Us too, Patoni. Thanks for all your help. Drew and Ella went flying and tumbling and tumbling through the air. Meanwhile, Ray had already made it back to the time machine. Go inside! Whoa! Whoa! Huh? No! My bones! All the bones went flying, and the bones fell into the shape of an amazing two-headed dinosaur. Nobody ever saw a dinosaur like that before. Drew hit the lever, and bam! They were off once more. Soon they appeared back in the museum. Ah! Oh. What'd you do that for? You owe me a bag of dino bones, Drufus. I'm going back. Looking for this? I want my dino bones. Now, now, young man, no need to cry. I'm gonna keep you by my side all day and we are gonna see all the dino bones this museum has to offer. I'll get you for this, Drufus. Mark my words. Oh no, I totally forgot about our selfie. We gotta go back in time. I think the dino statue will have to do this time. I've never seen that dinosaur before. I bet that one was worth millions. No! Say cheese. Well, kids, another Drew adventure had come to a close. Drew and Alec got to see all the dinos of their dreams, and they stopped Ray from leaving them in Dinoville forever. Moral of the story, boys and girls, be careful when you time travel, and try not to lose all your stuff while you're flying upside down on a dinosaur. You never know who's going to grab it. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty pen ultimate. Today's episode is going to make history, literally. It was the day before the big social studies test on American history, and all the kids at Cool School and Cruel School had to pass the test or else summer school. That's it! I'm not taking this dumb test! Back to the books, kid! Or good luck in summer school! Ugh, who needs history anyway? Wait a sec, that's it! Nobody needs history! I'll just go back in time and erase it! All of history gone! Then no social studies test! <laughs> Hey, Drufus. I mean, Drew, old buddy. Not now, Ray. I'm studying. I was just going to ask if you want to go back in time to meet Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and all the other cool people back then. Hmm, that does sound pretty cool. Also, would be a great way to study for the test. I could ask him all my questions. Oh, I've always wanted to ask Thomas Jefferson an important question. Like, was it hard to write the Declaration of Independence? No, how he invented mac and cheese. That was a genius. Totally, I love mac and cheese. Uh, wait a sec. Why are you suddenly being all nice and friendly? I just want to meet the guys who started our country. Is that too much to ask? Hmm, I guess not. And I guess I could just draw a quick time machine. Now that's what I'm talking about. Well, I'm coming along. Quick, you guys, over here. Drew didn't know Ray was up to no good, so he quickly sketched the time machine, and he hopped inside with Ray and Nikki. Hit it. First stop. 1776 for the signing of the Declaration of Independence. When our country became America, land of the free and the brave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And off they went way back in time to the year 1776. They popped out at Independence Hall in Philadelphia, where it all began. That must be Thomas Jefferson. And that must be the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> 
So long, American history. So long, social studies test. Ray, wait, what are you doing? But it was too late. Ray had already erased the entire Declaration of Independence. Oh, good heavens. Then he swiped the keys to the time machine. I'll take those. Catch you later, stinkers. Or not. <laughs> Quick, we can't let him get away! With no time to spare, Drew sketched a second time machine and hopped inside. Back to cool school. But when they stepped out, nothing looked like cool school at all. At least not the cool school they remembered. Ella, is that you? Why, of course it's me. Whoever else could it be? Pardon, don't mean to be a bother, but we're running behind the clock and we are quite late for reading hour. Reading hour? You mean story time with Miss Booksy? Uh, no sir, I meant reading hour with Lady Library. Well, that's not her real name, but we had a good laugh from it. Didn't we, Robert? Ha ha ha! Indeed, Eleanor. Anyway, we're set to be reading about the origin of the monarchy and all the King Henrys, so we'd best be off. Cheerio! Something is definitely not right here. They're all British. Well, of course. Don't you see? No Declaration of Independence. No America. Britain rules. Oh, no. You're right. He erased the Declaration of Independence. We have to fix this. Drew knew he had to do something quick. So, Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into the stupendous Drewbendis. Come on. Back into the time machine. Drew quickly hopped into the time machine and traveled back to 1776. Uh, Mr. Jefferson? What, what? What's going on? Who are you? Anyone lose a child? An oddly dressed child? Shh! No one can explain! Well, it's actually kind of hard to explain. You see, we... Heard a rumor that you and your friends were planning on writing a document of sorts. Yes, declaring the independence of America from Britain. Oh, that. Yes, we tried, but sadly someone came around and erased the whole thing. Some things just aren't meant to be. But, but... With all due respect, this is totally meant to be. It took too long to write, so maybe some other time. Anyway, time for tea. Hmm. Suddenly Drew had an idea. Mr. Jefferson, what if I told you this pen will write everything for you? Really? <gasps> this pen is simply amazing. So much easier to write with than a quill and ink. Gentlemen, this young man in his underwear and cape has a magical pen. And you would like to give the declaration another try. Here, yeah, here, yeah, yeah. here. Better not be any disappearing ink this time, Thomas. Relax, Johnny. I feel good about this fellow. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary, and the Declaration of Independence was underway. Wow, we're actually seeing it being written. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amazing. This is going to be a great addition to our future. Trust me. Not if I can stop it. Suddenly, Ray came flying at the declaration, but this time Drew was prepared. Stop right there, Ray. Drew quickly used his pen to sketch a giant quill pen ink shooter, and then he squirted all of Thomas Jefferson's ink right at Ray. Call it quits and we'll let you down easy, Ray. Ha! No chance. Ray used his eraser to erase the ink off his face. Then he gave the bookcase a big shake, took him tumbling down on top of Drew. Whoa, whoa! <gasps> Sayonara, Trufus! Hey, the declaration is here to stay this time, you ruffian. Thanks, Nick. I have an idea! I'm on it. With Ray inches away from the declaration, Drew quickly sketched a super awesome mac and cheese tosser. Load her up, Nicky. Uh, what is this stuff? Good old mac and cheese. Although I hate wasting all the cheese like that. Not really why I invented it, but okay. And in came a second, and a third, and a fourth gob of mac and cheese until Ray was totally stuck inside. Let me out of here, Drufus. Oh, we will. Just in time for our American social studies test. Back to the time machine for you, Ray. And this declaration is staying just where it is. Time machine? Oh, long story. <laughs> Thanks for all your help, Mr. Jefferson. That's a great piece of writing you got there. Really appreciate all you did to start our country. My pleasure. Good to meet you, Drew. And off they went, back into the time machine, this time with a heaping ball of ooey gooey mac and cheese. Then they all hopped out of cool school on the other side, and everything was back to normal. American flag and all. Better get cleaned up fast, Ray. Don't want to write any cheesy answers on your test. <laughs> Get out of here, Drew! Uh, uh, uh. 
Well, kids, you saved the day once again. There were no more Brits walking around cool school, and evil Ray Blank was in a sticky situation. Ray, is that you? Maybe. All of this just to get out of your social studies test? You know what this means. Detention! Moral of the story, boys and girls, without the Declaration of Independence, there'd be no America. And if you're around when someone tries to erase it, you just carve them up with macaroni and cheese. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. I hope you're all ready to speed right into things because today's episode is quite a ride. It all started on an annual field trip. This year, all the cool school and cool school kids took a trip to the Botanical Garden. Hello, boys and girls. And my lousy, rotten kids. Well, all kids are special. Anywho, welcome to the annual interschool field trip. Today is all about leaving our distractions behind and connecting to the natural world around us. That goes for you too, bad guys. Villains need to know about the world so they can know how to wreck it. Right. Oh, well then. Oh, wow. Looky here, kids. Isn't this little guy a beauty? Gonna turn into quite the butterfly, eh? Ugh, I hardly got any legs on that pic. Maybe if I add an emoji. Because, you see, caterpillars turn into... Crush! Crush, you candies! There we go! Oh, I give up. No patience these days. Just then, Ray Blank snuck out of the pack and headed right towards a sign that said... No trespassing. Let's go! <laughs> Guys, look! Over there! kids quietly snuck away and headed right towards Ray. Hey, that kind of rhymed. Oh no, he's gonna get us all in trouble. Quick, you guys, we gotta get him. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into the stupendous Drewpendous. With no time to spare, Drew whipped out his penultimate and sketched a super speedy Drewmobile. And off they went, right past the sign and howling night owls <laughs> and poisonous bushes. Kids, don't try this at home. Until finally. Ray Blink, stop. Wow, that was fast. Boo! Wow! Looking for me? <laughs> okay, either you ate too much candy or you're under some kind of magic spell. Even better! Speed soda! I got it from that fountain over there. This awesome soda comes out. Get out of my way! I love that stuff and I'm thirsty. <laughs> One cup and you'll fly through all the boring stuff in life. Like garden field trips. Yuck! That would be pretty sweet. So much more time for video games. So much more time for cooking tutorials. Gee, I don't know you guys. We don't even know what's in it. You can't be afraid of the future, Drew. Going faster is what new technology is all about. Without thinking twice, Nikki, Robbie, and Ella went straight for the fountain and got some speedy soda. <laughs> Suddenly things started to move a lot faster. I could totally take on Dash. This is incredible. Just gotta get better at my footwork. Okay, this is awesome. Um, guys? They all race at lightning speed just in time for the end of the field trip, which they sped right through. And then craft class, which seemed like it was over in a second. Kids, you forgot your slime. And then lunchtime, which seemed like it was over in a minute. And then the annual cool school mountain hike, which they finished before anyone else. Well, I didn't see anything or enjoy it very much, but I was done super fast. Guys, I have a confession to make. I kind of want to slow down. Me too. This is a little too fast. I hear you. I've got lots of time for YouTube videos, but I feel like I'm missing the point of everything. I want to enjoy stuff. Enjoying your new speedy superpowers? As a matter of fact, we're not. How long does this last, Ray? Forever! And as long as you're speeding through everything, you'll never have fun at cool school again! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to discuss a pressing issue among our students. You mean how they're totally distracted? Can't even finish one fairy tale before they're zipping off to the next thing. It's the same over at cool school! Can't even get Ray to finish detention, so I gotta give him more detention. It's a mess. Well, I've had enough of it, and our hero Drew here has a plan to make it stop. I'll try to draw a slow down machine, but we have to get everyone to stop drinking the soda. Or it may not work at all. 50-50 shot. So there's a chance they'll be speeding through cool school forever? Yes, and side effects include severe sleepiness, no ability to focus, and endless ice cream cravings. Okay, maybe the last part isn't so bad. Works for me. I'm on it. It was lunchtime again and all the kids are plowing through another round of PB&Js. There's hardly even time to taste anything. 
Guys, you have to come here and step inside my slow down machine. Yes, please. Yeah, I'd like to slow down a little. They each ran to the machine so fast they could barely squeeze in. Then it turned on and... Anyone Whoa. else feel slower? Oops, maybe I turned it up too much. Looks like the machine did the trick. No more speed soda for these guys. Don't worry, we're never drinking that again. Never, ever. No matter how thirsty I get, it's strictly water. Maybe some orange juice. And of course, chocolate milk on weekends. Well, kids, looks like Drew saved the day again. The speed soda was gone, and Ray wasn't gonna bother them anytime soon. No more soda for you. From now on, it's just prune juice and cod liver oil. Moral of the story, boys and girls, don't drink soda to speed up life. Enjoy the journey. I wonder if you're thirsty, have some good old-fashioned water. Although, chocolate milk's pretty good, too. It's time for a brand new adventure with Drew Pendis and his mighty pen ultimate. It was D-E-A-R, Dear Day at Cool School. That's when you drop everything and read. Isn't this just the best? I love Dear Day. Drop everything and read means a whole day of story time. One of my favorite days. Got my special Dear Day popcorn. Whoa! I can't wait to dive into these books. Uh-oh, kids. Looks like there are some unexpected visitors in class today. It's Ray Blank and Timmy Timmy. I bet they're up to no good. I hate Dear Day. Me too. Ugh, you don't even sound evil. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> sorry. All right, we're ready to go. Time to drop everything and look out. We dropped everything all right. Now don't mind if we erase all these books too. <laughs> Ray erased as many books as he could get his hands on. Then he grabbed Timmy and he stuck out of the room before anyone could see them. Guess there were too many books on that shelf. Strange, never was a problem before. Everyone okay? Uh, I am, but these aren't. The books, they're all empty. There must be some kind of mistake. My books are always filled with stories. We can't have reading day without stories. I don't get it. Stories can't just vanish. They can if they've been erased. You're right. It looks like these stories have been erased. But who would erase stories? I can think of one bad guy who likes to erase stuff. Ray Blank, I've got your number and you've got my letters. You're going down. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into the stupendous Drupendous. Just when I thought we were going to have a relaxing day of reading and popcorn. Now, if I were a villain trying to ruin reading day, where would I go? Aha! Follow me, you guys. With no time to spare, Drew and his buddies jetted off to the library, where there are a gazillion books. In the library, they spotted Ray and Timmy trying to erase all the library books. Oh, no! They're trying to erase them all. Does that mean no reading ever again? Not if I can help it. Listen up. I've got a plan. Timmy Timmy was walking in the library when a book suddenly appeared in front of him. Ooh, that looks like a good book. Had to be a real villain for dummies. Ooh. But Ella was moving it on a string. Uh-oh. Then Drew caught him in a blanket. Ah. Here, read this, but stay quiet. Okie doke. Thanks, Drew. Timmy, where are my books? Robbie, that's your cue. Coming right up. Robbie quickly grabbed a stack of books and headed straight in Ray's direction. About time, Timmy. Gotta start being reliable if you're gonna be a real villain, okay? Hello? Yeah. You're not Timmy. Uh, nope. Come to help me erase these books too, have you? Ray began lifting the books off the floor, erasing one page after the next. No, those belong to our library and Miss Booksy. Not anymore. <laughs> Stop right there, Ray. Uh-uh, not gonna get in my way this time, Drewfus. Drew quickly drew a word blaster to cover Ray in words, but as fast as he could blast them, Ray would erase them. Drew even shot the word Ray at Ray, and he erased it. Ray, you just erased your own name. I did? Yeah, can't you read? Ugh. Wait, you can't read? Yeah, so what? So that's why you hate Dear Day. No wonder he wanted to get rid of all the books. I hate books, all right. How can you hate books? They're the best. Because, well, because I can't read, okay? Now leave me alone. So we'll teach you. It's not hard. Just take some practice. But who cares, okay? Reading's for losers anyway. No, it's not. Reading's the best. I bet you would change your mind if you came to story time. Especially Miss Booksy's story time. Yep. She makes reading easy and super fun. I even learned to spell donut. D-U-G-A, uh, 
D O G. See, everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, Reading mean. takes practice. And that's what story time is for. No, uh, I couldn't. I mean, well, there's no way anyone's letting a villain into story time. Well, we will if you promise to stop erasing all of our books. Uh, well, all right, fine. Just this time. And if it turns out I hate story time, then. Yeah, yeah, we know. You'll be all villainy again. No, come on. Deer Day's gonna be over soon. Deer Day? You know, drop everything and read. You'll see. Drew and the gang jetted back to Miss Brooks's class, but this time with the villain in tow. Oh, I see you've brought a, a special friend to story time. Yep, we wanted to see what all this reading is about. Well, we better show him then. If I only had some words in my storybooks. Oh, right. Drew quickly pulled out his pen ultimate and sketched all the words right back into Miss Books' storybooks. Whew, thanks, Drew. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Once upon a time... Well, boys and girls, land. Drew had saved the day once again. Dear Day was back in action, and this time, everyone was reading. Uh, hello? Anybody out there? Oh, well. Guess I'll just keep reading my book. Moral of the story, boys and girls, read! It's good for you, and it's super fun. Try it the next Deer Day, or any day. Even Ray likes it. Shh, this is a good story. Thanks to everyone who suggested I save a story. Hit below if you like reading too. Be sure to comment what Drew should draw on his next adventure. And hit subscribe below so you never miss a beat. See you guys next time, bye.